Abby, she was pretty gutsy. She was a very patriotic girl, and I tested her with, with a variety of questions to find out what she was really thinking. The whole way she was really, truly an American, a U.S. citizen, staying patriotic, but just wishing that she could figure the situation out a little bit better. Abby, do you ever get mad at the U.S.? about this? Before we tried to get him over illegally, we, um, we asked the Mexican government to, we asked the American government to let him pass and basically what they do is they just randomly let you, they give you papers and it's, what we were going to do first is a tourist visa and once he got here we were just going to do his regular papers. Actually my father-in-law and my mother-in-law each got their visa to pass. They are now able to come in the States whenever they please within a certain amount of time. Um, we asked for, the, for Diego to be able to pass and all they have to do really is to call my parents and to say is this true? Is Abigail really married to Diego and will you guys support him if you know do you guys is he able to come with you? This is not a lie you know because of course they can say well, we're married to an American and you know anything like that. Now, of course, eventually it won't be good enough just to have word of mouth. You'll have to produce the papers. Exactly. In fact, right now, that's what you have to do. Exactly. Is your intention to live in Mexico? No. No, I don't ever want to live in Mexico again. Again? Until I'm, I'm retired and don't have to rely on the Mexican government for anything or their people. What are you saying? <laughs> it's a very hard culture. It's, a very, um, it's very different than ours because of the way that their government um, treats them they just they rely on thievery and obviously when they see an American they just see money so it just it's a lot of it's a lot of abuse really I actually worked in Cabo while with my husband and my daughter went to school a preschool there and I was treated very very terribly pretty burned from it that so much that I will never work in Mexico again. Well, what's that mean? I mean, you're treated poorly, but I've been in Mexico and was treated royally. Right. Um, I was treated, I was accused of being a thief, and um, I had people from the business that I worked out pretty much stalk me for a week and threaten me until they thought that I had the money, which I never even, I don't have, I didn't have their money, I don't have their money. Well, no doubt about it, you were in a place that was particularly thick with criminals and people there yeah, right. have, have uh, th they, it's a culture of crime right in that particular area. Yeah, exactly. But it's a joke because the, the, the management there, you know, they're very, if anybody's stealing from anybody, it's them stealing from their people. So I think any of us who know anything about their culture know that, that particular area has a tremendous amount of uh, stealing going on. People, they're just, they, yeah, they just assume it's, it's part of life there. That's sad because it's really, really bad there. You know, in, in smaller Guadalajara and Chapala. That's all right. It's part of this thing. That's part of this. Well, <laughs> everybody will enjoy that part of it. Yeah, she can go outside for a little bit. She's just, she just wants to sit with me. Abby, everybody will enjoy that, that part. <laughs> Come on, let's go outside. Keona. Go outside? Yeah, go outside. Looky. You can just go out the door. Yeah. Okay, sure. Ooh, let's go okay we're back. <laughs> we're back. Let's check our connections here. Yeah, we're in good shape. Okay, uh, now, let's see. Abby, your daughter... You speak to her in Spanish. Uh, I guess you believe that that's something that's very important. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it'll asset her in her future in many ways that I can't even predict. I mean, I don't even know how much it's going to be able to help her. And she, we also, I also have very beloved, you know, I love my mother-in-law and I love my 
his grandparents, you know, and I want them to feel, you know, I want them to be able to communicate with her and to share their affection with her. Ah. And she can do the same to them. Of course. I wasn't even thinking about that. So, I mean, they have a great desire for your daughter, their granddaughter, yeah. their niece, their, uh, let's see, whatever else, uh, cousins. Right? Yeah, absolutely. For her to be able to communicate with them. Well, what a beautiful idea. Yeah. So, how do you do this? Just, how do I teach her Spanish? We basically just spoke to her in Spanish since she was a baby. And I kind of do more Spanglish. I do a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of English. Um, it just kind of depends, you know, on, on who's at the house. But with her, I'm, you know, mostly it's, it's, I try to do a lot of Spanish. My dad, her grandfather speaks to her in, uh, mostly Spanish, too. So now, Kiona, you can say things like, Dame beso, and she'll give you a kiss. Or you can say, give me a kiss, and she'll give me a kiss. Or you can say, come here, and she'll come. Or you can say, ven, and she'll come. You know, she's definitely picking up the... Both languages, you know, like it's nothing. Now, Abby, I want to know how it, how does your husband and your daughter how do they stay in contact? Um, at this point, basically just through uh, the telephone, as he he'll call and talk to her. At this point, she's kind of at the age where the telephone scares her. She's not really sure what it is. Uh, for him, we. We did a we videotaped her walking for the first time and put that on YouTube, and her dancing. We put that on YouTube and her drinking out of her first cup and things like that. We 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 videotape it, put it on YouTube, and then he's able to call and we give him the address and we we'll, you know watch it together and that's basically how he's able to see these. Just past th you know two months that I've been here without him, this the second time, uh, you know able to see her growing. How did you? fall in love with this um, <laughs> husband who has been gone for almost a year? Um, we met in um, a small convenience store called OXO, which is basically the equivalent of a 7-Eleven. Um, I actually lost my parents' digital camera and um, I had to pay for it, so I had to go find a job. And uh, Diego and his family had just moved to Chapala from a small town, very small town, about an hour away from Chapala. And this is in central Mexico? Yeah, this is in 30 minutes from Guadalajara, mm -hmm. the small town. So, um, in the place that, uh, in, uh, Chapala and Jajijic and Jocotepec, all these places are very, there's a lot of Canadians and Americans retired. So it's a very tourist area. The OXO that he lived in, or that he worked in, uh, their parents have kind of, they, his dad and him had kind of took it to, it's a very large franchise, OXO's all over Mexico, so they kind of bought into that one. They weren't obviously the owners of OXO, but they were the ones managing it at that time. And uh, it was a huge strip mall that was very, very Americanized, you know, there was salons, a lot of American women. And Subway, I mean, there's this is, this is a long strip mall, and uh, so I thought, well, I should get, be able to get a job in Oxo because a lot of Americans come through to get gas, and uh, you know they come in and get their drinks or whatever, and I could, I could be you know a use. So after working there for a while, um, my husband was pursuing me, and we began to date. So you like that? <laughs> Does he speak English? No, he doesn't. Now you say this area down there has lots of retired people, right? Yes. From, the Canada, from Canada and the U.S. I bet I know the answer to this one. Do they speak Spanish? They try. Uh, they, not very well. Not most of them don't, uh, but they, they do try. Isn't that funny because so yeah. many people here complain about others coming here and yeah. not speaking English. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What about falling in love with somebody from another country who can't get in here easily? I mean, you know, there's a song, what do you get when you fall in love? You get enough germs to catch pneumonia? Well, you've caught more than that. Yeah, I would just recommend not getting pregnant as soon as you get married. <laughs> if you're going to get married to someone and decide to have your child 
you know, I, w I didn't want to have her in Mexico, so that was my decision, but I would recommend, you know, just making sure, you know, and making sure you're in it for the long haul, because it's going to be hard work, and it's, you miss your parents, I mean, you miss your, I'll, eventually your parents, my parents moved back to the States, and I was left in Mexico with a new family that I didn't know, I didn't know my parents, my father-in-law, mother-in-law, barely at all, at all. and, uh, Mm, I, they were used to my husband being single. We, we, didn't, we didn't date that long before we got married.